Hello and welcome to High School Basketball on WOSN. Alongside Jerry Snodgrass, I'm Evan Skilleter, and tonight we're at Robert A. Arms and Gymnasium in Delphis as the St. John's Blue Jays are set to play host to the Cold Water Cavaliers in a MAC showdown. Jerry, two five and two MAC teams tonight, and should be a fantastic matchup in this historic gymnasium. I, I am so thrilled to be back here. I was mentioning before we went on that. You know, my coaching days starting in Defiance back in the 70s, I aged myself a little bit there, but they were the Western Buckeye League, and there are so many memories. Not all of them good from the coaching side, but at the same time, it's a thrill to be back here. This game means a lot tonight. Starting lineups are being read for you right now on the court. And as we said, both these teams 5-2 and two in the MAC. Delphi St. John's comes into tonight 14 and 5 overall, while Coldwater stands at 9 and 10. And this MAC conference is tough. We talk about MAC football all the time, Jerry, but when it comes to MAC basketball, it's no different. It is hard to win this conference. It is, and the great thing about it is, you know, every every school, even in down years, they're very competitive. So there's no never a game that you go into it and say there's nobody that has a chance. I'll tell you, if our viewers tonight are looking for a 100-point shootout, they're not going to see it, you know, because uh, Delta St. John's averaging 53-1 a game, and the Cavaliers averaging 47.8. And it's not because they can't score. It's because they play very good defense. Looking forward to this one, St. John's led in scoring by the freshman, Cameron Elwer, 22.3 points per game. He averages 8.1 rebounds to go along with it. A fantastic player. They start with Landon Grothaus, Nolan Schwinn, and Cam Elwer, Austin Mentor, and Aaron Mentor. For Coldwater, no one in double figures on average. They're led by John, or excuse me, by Evan Harlemer with 8.7. But again, like you said, both of these teams aren't really known for their scoring. No, they're not. And, you know, when you talked about Cameron Elmer's, you know, I'm not sure you said it, but he's a freshman. And he's one of the best freshmen in our coverage areas. And I think you'll see a lot out of him. You said it. He's a great scorer. He's a great rebounder. And just makes a lot happen on the floor. And, he, you know, for a freshman to do that, that that's really impressive. Coldwater starts with Marcel Blas in game, Evan Harlemert, Justin Kopp, Brady Leifeld, and Luke Schwederman. That tip goes out of bounds, so St. John's will start with possession. Well, you look at Luke Schwederman, number 42 on the court for uh, the Cavaliers, and, you know, watching him, he's a good three-point shooter. Lefty, and uh, he plays both inside and out. One of the things you'll see him do is really try to block shots, and I'd be curious to see how he handles foul trouble. St. John's gets inside early on, shot up, um, but a foul inside. How about that, Coach? Ah, uh, boy. You know, I watched him on a lot of tape, and, you know, I go back to um, one of the players for Defiance, one of the players for Liberty Benton that we had on a week or two ago, and just really, really good at timing and not using the body to go into someone. And I think, you know, what I watched of Luke, you know, he's only a junior, but um, he's tall. He's 6'7", and uh, he's going to go after the ball. And I stand corrected. Luke Schwederman does average 11 points, so he is one uh, Coldwater Cavalier that averages double figures. Both of those free throws good. That was Aaron Mentor, and the ball goes out of bounds. And so a turnover for Coldwater gives it right back to St. John's underneath the basket. You know, to our three officials tonight, George Mark, Michael Varner, and Carl Muniz. And, and I mentioned this earlier, we have JV game tonight. Now, that's the best officiated JV game I've seen in a long time. I know one team that got a couple technicals won't agree with that, but I thought they were on the whistle and everything. Very good job. Yeah, absolutely. And the quality of officials we have in Ohio, especially Northwest Ohio in our coverage area, I know fans often disagree with this statement, but we have a lot of really, really good quality officiating. We really do. And, and you know, especially in the MAC. And also down in the Shelby County League, one of the things you'll see a lot of times is they get quality officials out of, even from Dayton, mm -hmm. Cincinnati, even up in Toledo. And that's a tribute to the commissioners of those conferences. Absolutely. They, they really feel like a, a dedication that these kids deserve. You know, those guys not just taking those big time Division One games. And now the referees trying to figure out possession. The arrow favored Coldwater. The Blue Jays did get the tip after it went out of bounds. So I suppose 
what they're saying is that Coldwater actually won the tip and hit it out of bounds. And so because they controlled the tip, St. John's got the arrow. So there's still some question at the scorer's table. Ultimately, it will stay with St. John's as they move it around the perimeter. Nice inbounds play as it goes inside to Mentor. Mentor backs his way down, goes up against 6-7 and puts it in. He has four points. And you can see that they are going to go right at him. That's one of the things, you know, I talked about foul trouble. They're going to try to take uh, Delphi St. John. Blue Jays are going to try to take advantage of that right away and get him out of the game. Coldwater trying to get on the board with your scoreboard tonight, sponsored by Lee's famous recipe chicken. Schwederman thought about a three, instead sends it over to Blasen game. You know, I mentioned that, that you know, Schwederman, you know, can't hit from three, and it's 32% from outside the arc. He's got that high release, able to shoot over a lot of defenders he goes up against. That ball stolen away by Cam Elwer. Cameron making his way down the right side. Going into this game, I, I was concerned a little bit about, you know, well, the quickness of the guard play for the Blue Jays, you know, be a, a big factor for them tonight. And so far, I think it is. I mean, I got to see that a little bit. Good patience and ball movement. Three-pointer no good from Landon Grothaus, but I like the set right there. Grothaus wide open in the corner. And Grothaus loves that uh, three-point. A lot of the St. John's players shoot very well from that corner. And they move the ball so well and so efficiently, it's, it's hard to keep up with everyone on the perimeter when you come off and help. Well, you notice how open he was. Absolutely. Schwederman trying to post up inside. He'll have to leave the paint to avoid a three-second call. Up top now with Brady Layfeld. Layfeld to Schwederman. Schwederman gets some contact and goes off glass. That's yeah. good touch right yes, there, Jerry. Yes, it is a good touch. Does a nice job with that left hand. First basket of the night for Coldwater. 4-2, St. John's leads on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Mark Shine the other night told me an interesting fact. This is one of those, you know, worthless pieces of information, I guess. But we talked about Schwederman posting up on the, in the paint. He said the three-point, or excuse me, the three-second call originally only was designed mm. if your back was to the basket. I never knew that. I had a, a great opportunity to have Mark Shine speak to my class just the other day on the history of basketball, and he clarified that rule. He said the rule language has not changed. That three-pointer short, Elwer with the rebound. Again, he averages eight rebounds a game. Yeah, he said as long as you have the ball and you're trying to score, even the way it's written today, it's not a three seconds. Well, no correct. matter if you're trying to get open or not, that three, or shot, excuse me, no good. And I'm sorry, I mean, no matter if you shoot it or not, as long as Correct. you are making moves in Move order to, to get to right. the basket. Right. That's what, I, you know, as a former coach, that always drove me nuts when you hear <laughs> everybody yell, three seconds, three seconds. Well, you know, they're no, they're making a basketball move and uh, isn't going to be called. We could get into that forever and talk about the over-the-back call. You know? I was almost <laughs> going to mention it, but I decided not to. Maybe we'll see one tonight and we can talk about it. Coldwater back underway offensively. Nice cut to the basket yeah. by Schwederman off the screen as he finishes. That all, all four started, points for him. Yeah, and that all started with Evan Harlemer, you know, running off that screen, you know, and they do a good job of moving the ball and using screens to get their guys open. Four for the score. Elwer with it. Elwer inside. Got bumped on the ground. So baseline out of bounds coming up for St. John's as Coldwater called for their third. That's a great crossover move that time by Elwer's. The scoreboard not functioning as well as we'd like. The, uh, the points and fouls are not being displayed for players. So, not sure how many fouls that was, or what, which I, number foul that yeah, was on the game. I think that is, yeah, that might be his second. He took a seat, so I'd have to assume, not even halfway through the first quarter, with him on the bench, he has those two fouls. That three partially blocked. Nice close out there by Evan Harlemert. Harlemert with it, gives it to the corner. Mason Welsh off the bench. Inside with Cop. Cop fouled on his way up. Two free throws coming up. The first foul of the game on St. John's. And they do a very good job of attacking that inside. They're really going to make Delta St. John's. They're going to be patient. Again, I mentioned that they're averaging only 47.8 a game, but they're going to try to go inside and take advantage of it. First free throw up and good for Cop. This season, a 67% free throw shooter. 
He averages right around six points a game. Six one senior. They've got some good senior leadership on, on the Cavs. And the Cavs now with a two point lead, their first lead of the ball game. Four minutes, 21 seconds to go here in the first quarter. St. John's breaks the pressure. Now someone's going to get called for a reach in. It's going to be Balin Blockberger. Talk about the balance and, you know, the strength of these teams. And, you know, both of them 5-2 coming into this, 5-2 and two coming into this. But, you know, Coldwater only lost to Marin Local earlier, 62-58. They won at New Bremen. I mean, New Bremen's a good, a great team. good team. Beat Van Wert. Coldwater beat Van Wert. Mid-range jump shot, no good from Landon Grothaus, the 5'10 senior. Cold water the other way. Harlem Hurt sends it back inside. Cop going to work on the block. Nowhere to go. Harlem Hurt inside, lost the handle, eventually finds the hands of St. John's Jack Gerker. Coldwater does a very nice job of running their break down the sideline and getting people post up and getting in positions. That's a very fundamental thing that you can tell they do very, very well. Three-pointer on the way. It's no good. Ethan Drunk Miller, Drunk Miller, excuse me. That one no good as well. Elwer skies for the rebound. He's just got a nose for the basketball. He, he does. That's what good basketball players do. It isn't size. It's just a great nose for the ball. Inside goes Elwer, now kicks it out. Three-pointer on the way. That's good. Landon Grothaus with the three. And as much as they're picking up, you know, Elwer's on that drive, you know, he's going to be able to kick it out. They're going to have a lot of three opportunities. He does such a great job getting into the paint, making the defense collapse on him. They're hitting 33% of their threes on the years. Don't on the year. Don't take a ton of them, but Elwer comes in and gets the steal. Elwer maybe hit in the face, gets inside once again, like we said, collapsing the defense, but that three no good. Offensive rebound by Druckmiller. Right now, offensive rebounding by the Blue Jays has really been a big difference, you know, at least in control of the ball. And a nice play there, Elwer off the screen, and Nolan Schwinnen finds him for the assist. That was set up from a previous player where they screened ball side and, and had that guy coming up, and this time he went back door on it. That shot no good. It was taken by Mason Welsh. Uh, looked like an over and back did, as Elwer stepped on the line. Referee didn't see it. Truckmiller inside and a foul as he turns right into Harlemert. That's foul number five against Coldwater here in the first yeah, quarter with 145 to go. And that's just from, you know, the Blue Jays attacking the basket so hard. And even so, they attack it, they kick it out and shoot the three. A bunch of new Blue Jays checking in. T.J. Wirtz, one of them. Three-pointer in the corner by Mentor. That's no good. Ball tipped out of bounds, and it's last touched by Colin Feathers. T.J. Ward's coming in, a six-foot sophomore. He's, he's played in all 19 games of there, so they, they use a lot of players. Brady Layfeld handling the ball. Passes over to Blade Busher. Now in the corner, Layfeld. Inside they go, Cop. he lost the handle. You mentioned it earlier, St. John's helped so well inside and that's given so far Coldwater fits. Three pointer no good by Mentor and now we have a foul against St. John's. That'll be against Colin Feathers. Second foul against St. John's. 106 to go in the first quarter. And as usual, it was five to one on fouls, and we heard a pretty good applause out of a certain section here when they called that second one. Ball up top. Dewar sends it 
Inside to Schwederman. Schwederman nowhere to go. Almost has his pass tipped away. They're just playing great perimeter defense. Hands on everything. Making it very tough for Coldwater to find any opening. Ball now with Cody Dupeg. The plague, excuse me. And a scramble for the rock, but it ends up with Dewar. Dewar up top to Leifel. Under 30 to play, first quarter. Dewar to Schwederman. Ball swung around. Here's Leifeld. 15 on the clock. Dewar waits, then finds Schwederman. Yeah, they're going to post. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to post Schwederman up on the inside. Yeah, two seconds on the clock, and that one is up. It's no good. Might not have counted anyway. And so. After one quarter of play, St. John's leads at home 9-6 to six over the Coldwater Cavaliers. We will step aside. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Lee's famous recipe, chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe, chicken home style, happens here. Welcome yeah. back for the start of the second quarter. Evan Skilleter, Jerry Snodgrass with you from Delphus Jefferson High School. Now, once again, you're seeing great ball movement right now by the Blue Jays. That finds an open three in the corner. It's good. And Nolan Schwinnin starting things off in the second quarter. St. John's doubles up Coldwater. And that's what that ball movement does. Gets you a good open shot. Good answer right there from Brady Leifeld. 30% three-point shooter on the season. Knocks that one in. St. John's now. Can they answer? Ball handed to Landon Grothaus. He goes inside, up, and in through contact. Tough basket. Boy, I tell you, he, he's got a good, quick step. Great basket that time. Great move. Inside now. Schwederman lost the handle, but that was because he was fouled. Aaron Mentor will get tacked with that one. Three fouls now against St. John's. You know, I mentioned earlier about, you know, some big wins by Coldwater, but well, you look at Delta St. John's too. You know, they beat Crestview number one seed in their tournament, who happens to be in their bracket, too. Mm -hmm. But uh, beat Van Wert, beat Kaleida. Uh, granted, that was their opening game, but uh, we saw Kaleida. We had Kaleida a couple weeks back, and that's a huge win. Both these teams play very tough schedules. We already talked about how tough the MAC is, but both of them filling up their schedules with tough non-conference opponents as well. I talked about loving to come here. You know, hey, the school has 23 state championships, 37 MAC championships in different sports. And it's uh, probably numerous other WBL oh, championships wow. yes, back in the day. 14-9 yes. the score. St. John's go inside. Here's Drick Miller. Drick Miller, right foot was the pivot foot. No travel there. Now a foul, and that'll be on the floor. So a baseline out of bounds. It's number six against Coldwater. They're going to attack that against Brady Leifeld. That's his first. You know, and I, 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 that's the second time I've seen that really good first quick step by Landon Grothaus. You know, he's averaging just around 12 a game and 5'10 senior, but what a compliment he is. Uh, and, and really the two together complement each other so well with um, Elwers, Cameron Elwers on the perimeter. Elwers into the game now for St. John's. Ball up top with Elwers. He goes to his right. Elwers gets a man in the air, and that's good offense. Nice yeah. and patient, gets a guy to go up, and he goes up over the top. And look how he used his body so well in that. And we'll remind you a couple times, especially important after a, a heads play, headsy play like that, that he's just a freshman. Yes. I think that's his first basket on the night. You know, you look at that and you say, well, you know, okay, hold, hold him down. You know, yeah, but how many rebounds does he have right now? How many assists? 
And now How about four points? Yeah, now it's we're up to four. It handles from Elwer. I love how much or how well he changes pace yeah. out on the floor. It makes it really tough to guard. Look at his emotion too. He just plays, you know, at one speed. You know, and he plays hard. You know, and love everything about him. Absolutely. Now Coldwater will take their first time out of the game with 5.19 to go in the second quarter. St. John's leads 18-9 over the Coldwater Cavaliers. We will step aside. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to St. John's High School, where the Blue Jays lead 18 to nine. Coldwater calling their first time out of the game as St. John's has opened up this nine point lead, but Schwederman's gonna have a chance for two free throws to cut into it. That's what they, during that timeout, they said, okay, let, let's get this back. Slowly, methodically, let's post him up on the inside and get it into him. That's the first foul called against Ethan Druk Miller. Team fourth, first free throw up, no good. Something when we were, during the JV game, I noticed we're looking at the uh, cold water end of the floor right here, but all the varsity players were sitting there before they went in and got dressed and all down there with the elementary kids. Yes. And there those elementary kids just eating that up. And you wonder <laughs> how you keep programs strong. Man, that's how you do it. Absolutely, now the ball in the corner. Nolan Feathers sends it up top for Nolan Schwinnen. Elwer trying to post up, doesn't get the ball. Instead swung over to Schwinnen, his deep three, no good. Rebound tipped up in the air, grabbed by Feathers. Another three on the way, that's good. Austin Mentor with the three. Coldwater quickly the other way. Three on the way, can they answer? That's well long. And Coldwater player out of bounds as he touched the basketball. That was Balin Blockberger. Well, that, that's, a, that's a tough three if you're uh, Coldwater. You know, it just kind of is a backbreaker, you know, here early on. But you, you play well, you get, you get to the free throw line on one end and don't hit, give up a three on the other. Score remains 21 to nine. Also went zone after that timeout to see, you know, zone, but they're sticking with Cameron Elwers. Shot by Drew Miller inside off the pick and roll, no good. Good defense from Drew Miller. Look at him stay straight up and down, and the quick hands from Elwer takes it away, and he's fouled in transition. That's number seven against Coldwater, and it sends. Elwer to the line. Can't you just tell when you look at Cameron Elwers, you know, that he just loves, loves to play the game. Absolutely. He loves to compete. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's scoring, rebounding, defense, quick hands. He just loves to play the game. Elwer shoots 5.9, excuse me, 5.4 free throws a game, makes 4.6. We're talking pretty precise analytics on that <laughs> That's one, you right. know? That's right, he makes that one. Always seems to be the coach's son that shoots the, <laughs> the best or the highest percentage from the free throw line. Yeah, I, I generally know why that is too. <laughs> you're either gonna hit free throws or you're not eating dinner. Well, he missed one there, yeah. so he only gets half of the A&W cheeseburger. That's right. Ball up top with Blockburger. He hands to Miles Potcotter. You see though, you know, so many bobbled passes, and that's not because of cold water. It's just because the hands are so quick defensively by um, the, the Blue Jays. They don't leave any separation either. No. Even off ball, they stay right in the pocket of their assignment. Elwer gets three screens, catches the pass. Yeah, they're playing a box and one here. They're staying right with Elwer's. Skip pass. Corner three, Mentor. No good, and then a foul called against the offense as the shot was in the air. I know Coach Elwers has certainly seen 
you know, a box and one before, you know, special defenses like that, junk, junk defenses, we always call them, but I mean, there's a reason you do it. And uh, so they, it's nothing new to them, but it does throw off your rhythm. Coldwater will take another timeout, 3.02 to go, second quarter. St. John's has opened up a 22 to nine lead as we step aside. We'll be right back after this on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. 2.55 to go in the second quarter and a nice play out of the timeout. That's exactly what you want to see. Last two timeouts, they've come out of that. And both times is going inside to Schwederman. Now the pass inside. Looked like they'd get a good look, but pass bobbled. St. John's keeps possession. Mentor up top for Grothaus. Now here's Nolan Schwinnen. Schwinnen's pass tipped away. Nice job stepping in the passing lane by Miles Potcotter. Schwinnen thought about that when he had that shot. He thought, well, we'll wait and get a better one. Give Coldwater credit. They've come out of their timeouts both times, you know, playing with a uh, sense of urgency. Elward. Gets the screen, sends it up top, Austin Mentor. Mentor to Grothaus. Grothaus back up top, Schwinnen. More good ball movement from the Blue Jays, who seem to be content just moving it around the perimeter. They don't take bad shots. Right, and you know, again, I mentioned a box of one like that, you know, they're back to a man-to-man -man right now, but you know, a lot of times that will really, really disturb you a little bit. St. St. John's been, you know, patient enough to get a good shot out of it. And Grothaus knocks that one in. 25 to 11. Coldwater with Miles Potcotter. Now an open look for Schwederman. His first open look at three tonight. Shot no good and then a foul on the loose ball. That'll be number six against St. John's. They call it against Joel Schrader. That's his second. You know, I had a minute ago where, you know, I mentioned the officials' names and I mentioned the JV officials. That were, they were so good. But I, lately, I have taken every opportunity I could to congratulate, to honor, to recognize the athletic trainers that are here tonight. Mm. I didn't get a chance to talk to them beforehand, but after the... Uh, uh, situation with the Bills a couple weeks ago, you know, that, you know, what they do is, and there's such a burnout rate with it, they're required to be at so many things, but bottom line is, can't do without them and love what they do. Absolutely. Agree with you 100%. They're at every game, and hey, there are a lot of games, probably more times than not, that they don't really do a whole lot in terms of on-court injuries. There's Correct. still a lot to do before and after games as that shot no good. Rebound grabbed there by Evan Harlemer, but they still come, they still they support their teams enthusiastically. Loose ball. Inside goes Elwer, fades away off class and in. My goodness, three defenders surrounding oh, yeah. him. Two with their hands on the ball, he strips it away and knocks it in. Now a deep three from Coldwater, no good, and there's gonna be a foul against St. John's and Drew Miller. That's two. Yep, I think they called oh. it, yep, they called that on Schwederman. I think, I think that's his second. It is indeed. I thought I saw Drew Miller with his arms around Harlemert, but instead, it'll be a one and one coming up for Drew Miller. Drew Miller averages 1.8 points per game. Shot a few free throws so far this year. That one up and off the front, no good. Harlemert skies for the rebound. 25 seconds to go in the half. Quick three from Coldwater. That's too deep. Offensive rebound pulled in. That was Justin Kopp. I think you're going to see that a little bit more. You know, I, me I mentioned that. Mentioned that earlier that they do a good job. The Cavaliers do a good job of getting the ball 
down the sideline in their break. That's how you beat that defense, you know, get it down there. He had a good open shot there, just didn't connect on it. Landon Grothaus called with the blocking foul. That will send Balin Blockberger to the line. Blockberger this season, 19 of 20 from the free throw line, and the announcer's curse holds true as he misses that one. Seven seconds, though, and Coldwater with the offensive rebound. Up top, Harlemer, deep three splash. Needed that, definitely needed that. Hopefully some momentum for Coldwater as they head into the locker room, trailing 27 to 14 on the road at St. John's. We will step aside, second half coming up after this on WOSN. Welcome back to Robert A. Arnzen Gymnasium on the campus of Delphus St. John's, where St. John's leads 27 to 14 at the start of the third quarter. Evan Skilleter, Jerry Snodgrass with you tonight. Kelsey Bimmer, Bimer, excuse me, and Mia Waddle on the cameras. And we've got a foul to start this half, and it'll send Marcel Blasen game to the line for free throws. And I think that's one of the things they talked about at halftime is, you know, you know, we're down, you know, 13 in a game like this, you know, a low scoring game is a lot of points, but, you know, more than a lot of high scoring games, but you're not going to get that many possessions, but let's get the ball inside. Let's get them in foul trouble. Let's try to get to the line. And uh, one of two there, but nonetheless, I think they accomplished that. Blossom gave him a 56% free throw shooter on the season as St. John's moves the ball well. Three-pointer on the way from Mentor. That's off the back, no good. Nolan Schwinnen lost his shoe. Now he works his way back on defense. An open look right there for Luke Schwederman who can't knock it in. That's the first really open look he's had. I mentioned he is a good three shooter, but that's the first look he really had. And Elwer, more patience around the basket, navigates his way around three defenders for the lay-in. Quickly inside goes Coldwater. Now a three. That's no good. Brady Leifeld with the attempt, and now a foul inside. They get that against Austin Mentor. Second against St. John's of the half. First against Mentor. You know, I didn't mention it at the start of the game, but you know, the, the keys, Nick Fisher mentioned one of the big keys for them in this game was to defend the three-point shot. Um, he listed that really as his number one key, and uh, they wanted to execute an offense inside and out, and that's exactly what they're trying to, I think his timeouts were really geared toward that. Let's, let's execute on this. And also, and I think, you know, Elwers is a big part of this, hard to believe when I say this, but it's to win the war on the boards, win sure. the rebounding battle. And that's not just with the bigs inside, that's with the guards and everybody. Uh, pass inside, Schwinnen, or excuse me, Schwederman yep. yep. off the feed, and he's fouled on his way up, scores, and that's three quick fouls against St. John's. Give the Cavs and, and give Coach Fisher a lot of credit because Every time down the court, that's exactly what they've tried to do in this half. We're you know, almost two minutes in, but you know, that's exactly what they're trying to do. Schwederman gets the free throw as well. 29-18 the score on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Inside goes Aaron Mentor. Mentor outside, then gets it right back. Good ball movement, open look, Grote House, splash. That, yeah, that was a great, great job inside. Was that Mentor, I think, that saw him on that reverse pass? Mentor made the pass to Schwinnen, who found Grote House for the three. Schwinnen moves the ball really well for this St. John's team. Now Coldwater, as you said, forcing the ball inside. Shot no good, off the backboard. Rebound tracked down by Elwer. Yeah, rebound and tracked down, but you saw how well Delta St. John's boxed out on that. Three from Aaron Mentor, no good. Offensive rebound, big block yeah. from the 6'7", Schwederman. And a foul will be called against Elwer. Number four now against St. John's of the half. It's the second against Cameron Elwer. You know, players like Cameron Elwer, you know, 
he's not going to come out of the game with two. But players like him, they, they know how to play with fouls. You know, they know, they just know. I mean, you don't have to tell them. You don't have to pull them out of the game to save. I mean, it's something fluke could happen, but they know how to play when they're in foul trouble or, you know, have a couple fouls on them. 32-18, back inside, Schwederman. Nowhere to go, good defense by Aaron Mentor. Now Mason Welsh attacks the basket, can't finish. Elwer in transition, Elwer goes up, he's fouled across the arm. It'll be against Brady Layfeld, the first against Coldwater of the half. Well, I mentioned the quick hands, and you know Landon Grothaus made that happen at the other end with the quick hands and the steal. It's a second against Layfeld, so back to the line goes Elwer, one of two so far tonight, makes the second, or the first, excuse me, makes his second of the night. Second one goes as well for the 80% free throw shooter, 75% tonight, three for four. And he, he now has 11 on the game. 34-18 the score. Schwederman up top. Passes over to Blasen game. Now a three, Harlemer. That's short. And a foul on the loose ball rebound. Nolan Schwinnen with the foul. And we're already up to five fouls against yeah. St. John's in the half. And they're legit. <laughs> Absolutely. There's been a lot of physical play under the basket. A lot of physical play. I'm looking across the court right now, Jerry, and it feels like everywhere I go, I see Spike Berry sitting <laughs> mid-court right in the center. One of the most legendary football coaches in yep. Northwest Ohio and one of the most familiar faces in schools everywhere. Yep, just talked to him the other day. Ball inside, Schwederman goes up and can't finish. Ball went in and out. Another rebound for Elwer. Open look for Mentor. That doesn't go. He's struggled from outside so far tonight. Good rebound that time. You know, picked off by, I, I can't remember, uh, I think it was Harlemer that took that down. Yep. Now Schwederman battles for the offensive board. Outside. Schwederman gets it back. Harlemer with the jab, gets inside, goes up, lost the handle. Rebound tracked down by Ethan Druckmiller. Elwer with the handles, gets to Drew Miller. The hands are so quick by both teams. There is so much bobbling of the basketball, but it's because of the defensive pressure. The timeout taken by St. John's, the first one they've taken today. 4.14 left in the third quarter as we step aside. 34-18, St. John's on top on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. 34 to 18 on that Lee's scoreboard. St. John's with the lead. Coach Elwer taking a timeout. St. John's has four left. Coldwater with three. The Blue Jays will throw it in from the side. You know, I mentioned, you know, we're entering the last week of the season, the regular season. And uh, Coldwater, you know, the eighth seed in their tournament and in their sectional, and they hook up with LCC, and winner gets bl the uh, Bluffton Allen East winner. Already tournament time. It seems like I say that every year. I know. The season goes way too quickly. Elwer jumps inside, now passes out. Three pointer on the way, that's short. Schwederman grabs the rebound. Comes Coldwater the other way. Harlemer to the baseline, stepped on the line. Mm -hmm. He's getting a little frustrated there because he got fouled, thought he got fouled earlier. And, you know, you talked about the, uh, you say that every year about this time. And in my, I'm in my uh, second chapter of totally worthless information here, I remember going to buy a firewood from the guy in Dola. And it was in the sprint, late winter, early spring. I said, ah, starting to see, stay light out a lot longer, and longer days. Looks at me, goes, Happens every year. I have nothing else to say. <laughs> Guess he's right. <laughs> Got you on that one. Nice pass inside. Drew Miller not able to finish. 
Tweederman came over to alter the shot. Yeah, he did a nice job. That's what 6-7 on the paint does to you. It's not always about blocking it, is no. it, Jerry? Just be a disruptor inside. Here's Harlemert. Hands it to Blasen game. And the shot no good. An offensive foul called after the release. That's against Mason Welsh. I didn't see it, but the official was, well, I mean, he, he was animated. very forceful on that call. So, and I don't hear anybody arguing. So he must have, I think it was a moving screen or, you know, like so many people get their elbows and their arms up on that screen away from the ball. It's the second against Coldwater. And now just, a foul. <laughs> we've seen so many calls away from the ball, you know, and this. It just highlights the physical. Uh, the physicalness of this game. And it's Welsh again with the foul. So his second in a matter of about 10 to 15 seconds. Three against Coldwater. Welsh is going to take a seat. Placed by Kopp. Ball sent in for Drew Miller. Now up top, Elwer. Inside, Elwer. Can't find any space as he's double teamed. They're doing a good job on Elwer. They really are. Schwinnen backs up, hands to Grothaus. Grothaus goes up, it's blocked. Good defense from Brady Layfeld. Nice physical drive to the basket. Good clean contact, right? Yeah. Sometimes people want to foul when there's no foul. It's just a physical yeah, game. It exactly is a contact right. sport. Yep. And I really enjoyed that defense there. How about the play? Schwinnen goes up and finishes. How many times have we seen some off-ball screens get guys open for easy lanes? You know, that's one of the things about, you know, far different from when I coached and you know every statistic was kept you know on a by an assistant coach but people take so many analytics today on the percentages of scoring and out of bounds plays I love to see that you know it's a great scoring opportunity inside Schwederman with the left hand no good Drew Miller with the rebound he's got a nice soft touch in that left hand absolutely does we saw a nice basket early on but he's been held in check since the first quarter Elward goes inside. Drew Miller passes to Schwinnen. Three pointer, no good. Drew Miller pops it up in the air. Loose ball. Eventually finds the hands of Marcel Blasengame. Harlemert thought about a three, instead spins inside. Now Leifeld in the corner. 140 to play, third quarter. And a foul on the floor. Number six against St. John's. They're going to get Landon Grothaus with the foul. It's one of the more physical games I've seen all year long. I mean, just like body on body every time. You can't call them all. A lot of them are away from the ball. And Jerry, what conference are we watching? <laughs> That's a good point. Good point. <laughs> it is physical no matter the sport. I even think I see contact in volleyball games in the MAC. They're <laughs> just so competitive. Deep three-pointer. That's no good. If you're going to tell me you saw it in golf, too, I'd be a Maybe. little concerned. You never know. Elwer inside, hit the deck, but got it away. Here's Aaron Mentor, and it's the Austin Mentor. They are definitely making uh, Elwer's work for everything. Now Harlemert called for the foul. His second, team fourth. A couple substitutions for Coldwater. Blockberger checks in along with Blade Busher. Here's Elwer, 70 seconds to play in the third quarter. Elwer high ball screen, gets bumped, and goes up. Oh my goodness! The circus shot from Cameron Elwer. He just, Cameron Elwer just knows, he just knows how to score, he knows, you know, you, yeah, you can coach it, you know, but, it's just a kid that lives in the gym, I and mean, you can just tell them. A chance for a three-point play. Knocks that one in. 40 to 18. St. John's leads. Correction, 39 to 18. Under a minute to play, third quarter. Three-pointer, open look. Blade Busher, he can't hit. Rebound tipped over to Austin Mentor. Nice quick pass ahead. And TJ works with the lay-in. 
his first bucket of the night. How about that? You know, catching one way, turning, and still having body control, laying the ball in. Nice job, TJ Woods. Schwederman goes up, and he'll be fouled by Aaron Mentor. Number seven against St. John's as Schwederman will head to the line for two free throws. Well, that was, that was a great job by TJ Woods. Obviously a great pass, but you know, to catch that with his back to the basket, be able to turn one, you know, without traveling, without losing the ball, and lay it in off the glass. Schwederman, 63% free throw shooter coming into this evening. That one good. We mentioned the touch. He's got a nice stroke from the free throw line. Yes, he does. I think, you know, as he's a junior, you know, he'll grow a lot. When I say grow, I mean, I don't know how tall he'll get, but, you know, he'll put on some weight and everything. And to have the touch that he has right now, that'll really, really carry him next year. That one goes as well. Schwederman will take a seat, replaced by Mason Welsh for the final 32 seconds of this third quarter. That's a good chance there to give him a little break. Three-quarter court look for Coldwater. Elwer picked up his dribble in no man's land, but able to get it away. Coldwater just hasn't been able to. I mean, they have not played bad at all. They just can't capitalize. They've had open threes and can't hit them. And, um, they're not playing bad. They're sure making Delta St. John's work for everything. One second on the clock. Elwer fouled on the shot. He'll shoot three. That's what a basketball player does. He you know, learns how to draw a foul. It, it, you know, that's <laughs> just hard. I wouldn't want to defend him. No, I couldn't defend him. Yeah. I, I don't even know if I'd I try. meant to say that, but <laughs> for me. Well, but. I believe you could at least give it a good <laughs> shot. Elwer, three free throws coming up. First one goes. He's four for five so far tonight. Three easy ones there yep. as the third quarter comes to an end. A 24-point lead for the home team. St. John's leads 44-20 over cold water as we step aside fourth quarter. Coming up after this on WOSN. Welcome back for the start of the fourth quarter at Robert A. Arnzen Gymnasium here on the campus of Delta St. John's. Evan Skilleter and Jerry Snodgrass with you. Mia Waddle and Kelsey Beimer on the cameras for you tonight. Nick Fraley, the editor. Great team covering this game. Tell you what, Jerry, you and I, we have the easy job. We do. You know, I'm glad you said that because they deserve so much credit. They're here all the time and setting up ahead of time. We walk in and you know, I offered to help set up, but they were more worried that everything would be connected to my car battery or something. So uh, I stay out of their way, but they do such a great job. They're so dedicated to what they do. Absolutely. Always appreciate all the staff at WOSN. 44-20 the score here at Arms and Gymnasium. Again, you know, just the quick hands in there just made it so tough. Uh, for, that was a 17... Uh, I think it was a 17-6 third quarter, you know, outscoring for Delta St. John's. Neither team has had anything easy, that's for sure. Coldwater especially, I don't know if I've seen a, a good open look for them in quite some time. Uh, they're switching screens on the perimeter and that just makes it, I mean, all the, all the tougher. And one of the forwards for St. John's switched on to yeah, he walked, yep. One of the forwards switched on to a guard. That was Aaron Mentor, and he was still able to stay yes, with him. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, when you have five guys that can guard one through five, that is a nice thing to have. Yep. You know, you talk. I talk about, you know, uh, Cameron Elwer a lot, you know, about, you know, and his scoring ball and everything he does and all. But, but they've just got the right, kind of a nice, you know, the nice group of players that play a lot of different positions, and you can't let anybody go. And uh, we said on our uh, tournament draw show, on our selection show, that they, they're going to be dangerous in the tournament. I, I, 
I think they're going to, of course, again, too, they could match up with the uh, with Crestview that they beat earlier. So that could be a monumental game. Absolutely. I've seen a couple St. John's Crestview games that have been really tight throughout the years. Uh, that's that's awesome too, you know, the rivalries of not just the Mac, but you know, you look at the other schools, you know, too, that are so close and Justin Kopp puts in the basket. 44-22 now. Elwer gets inside the defense, hands it off to Mentor, and Mentor fouled. It's number seven against Coldwater, so Mentor will head to the line for one and one. Both teams at seven fouls now. Not seeing too many uh, get the charge call, get the offensive call right. there. I think we've seen two similar plays in that exact same spot yeah. that both, both felt like they could go either yeah. way. You both. know, I will say this. I, I have noticed all year long the flopping is ending. You know, a lot yes. of the flops, you don't see it. Um, I know they changed that rule of the college, you know, about what it, how, how it's called, you know, uh, but it's um, you see it less of it. I mean, well, that, that just cheapened the game so much. And, and I'll tell you this, I, I watch a lot of Division Three college basketball being a Bluffton faculty member, and I don't think it's called very consistently yet, but I think referees are still trying yeah. to get a handle on what is a flop and what isn't. And oftentimes it's really hard to tell. And a nice basket inside there by Blasengame. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. I'm not recruiting for anybody when I say this, but I saw Heidelberg and John Carroll play the other night, Division Three basketball in, in college, and it is good. Yes. I mean, you want to play good. I mean, to me, it's such an extension of high school in terms of the crowd, excitement, you know, and it, uh, engagement. But uh, Division Three basketball is, I, I think, awesome. Absolutely, and I've had the honor of watching 34 years, well, I'm only 30, but 30, <laughs> 30 years of Guy Neal coaching the yes. Bluffton Beavers basketball team, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention him when we're talking about Division Three basketball retiring this season after 34 years at the helm of the Bluffton Beavers program. I've had a couple of my players when I coach played for Guy and uh, so many in the Northwest Ohio area that we know that played for Guy Neal. And he's got a good young core at Bluffton right now. A couple locals, Brady Wheeler from Shawnee and Nevin Robson out of Hardin Northern. Two freshmen that are getting some good playing time this year. A couple sophomores that play well as well. So hopefully he's left a pretty good roster yeah. for the next coach to build on. It's unusual when you see a coach, you know, at a place that long. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, kudos to, to Bluffton for, you know, supporting him all that time. And uh, when I say kudos to that, I mentioned here earlier when Robert Arns in gymnasium and you know, there's a the basketball coaches association names a, an award after Bob Arns, the Bob Arns Award, which is a very coveted award, 25 years at a school, and the number of those is diminishing all the time. You know, it's just harder and harder for people to do that. That wow. deep three goes. Wow. Nice catch and shoot by Marcel Blasengame. Blasengame came off that screen like that and just ready to shoot the ball. Something young kids, you know, got to come off. I think that's... You really see that in good shooters. They're coming off every screen, they catch every pass, expecting to shoot. That pass taken away. Schwinnen, or Schwederman, excuse me, grabbing it as TJ Wirtz was headed out of bounds, but then Coldwater gives it right back. 20 point lead for St. John's on the Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Thinking about grabbing a bucket on my way home. Yes, we had that at the uh, on the selection show the other mm. night. It was an empty bucket, and thank goodness uh, they didn't say that I took it all. <laughs> the reason it was empty. Well, if it was full, you probably would have. That's good yes. chicken. And we've got a timeout taken by Coach Elwer with 4:11 on the clock, 20-point lead for his St. John's Blue Jays. As we step aside, you're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Lee's famous recipe, chicken and lima, Wapak, and Delphus. 
call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken, home style, happens here. 4 11 to go in the fourth quarter, 47 27. St. John's on top of Coldwater. Coldwater got behind early and they just haven't been able to make a run, but it, it, it literally is not because of them. Uh, it's just, you know, Delva St. John's has played so well defensively. Talked about it just before the break, but not too many good looks for Coldwater. They've had to work for every basket here in the second half and really most of the game. Pass to the corner, ball taken away by Blasengame. Blasengame's gonna pull up for three. Can't get that one to go. Rebound pulled in by Elwer and he's fouled, so one and one coming up. Cameron Elwer having a great night and that reminds me, make sure you stay tuned after the game for our Stolle Insurance Hustle Award and check out the WOSN YouTube page for highlights of tonight's winner and all the other ones. Speaking of the YouTube page, I don't know, Jerry, if you've been on our YouTube page or the YouTube account, but every game that we broadcast, a week after it broadcasts, is uploaded to YouTube. You can watch every yep. high school basketball game that we've covered on our YouTube page. So make so sure I to head over there and homework. subscribe. That's right. You know, I, what a great I, resource. Can't, I, I've told so many coaches here lately, I, when we had the Kaleida um, Audeville game, even though Clyde won that, Audeville just was so good defensively. And so was Clyde. But I told their coach afterwards, I said, man, I'd love to come to your practice. Yeah, I just love to watch it. So you're welcome anytime. So unfortunately, I just don't get the time to do it. Sure, sure. Nice turn nice there by move. Schwederman. Drop steps his way to the rack and two more points for him. Now, word passes across the gym to Austin Mentor. Mentor has it stripped away. Blockberger with the steal, he stops. Backs his way out. Now Schwederman, mid-range jumper, that's short. Elwer, I have to say at least 10 rebounds. We're not keeping track oh, up yeah. here, but he is almost certainly at a double-double. You know, one of the things I look at with, with rebounders, and not just him at the guard spot, but any rebounder, I love to see how many offensive rebounds they get. I'm a, I'm a big one on the, you know, war on the boards and all that, but I always said it goes back to my one-inch vertical jump, and that was on my good days, but I love to see that from the standpoint of rebounders, good rebounders. No, they just anticipate that every shot's going to be missed. And when they do that, they know where it's coming off, and it's an art in its own right. There's some People just look at that rebound when a shot's missed. They don't look at what goes into it. Absolutely. Now a couple new Blue Jays checking in, and a round of applause for Gavin Holdgreevy and number 22, Peyton Stabler. I love that elementary school section, the, the, the uh, you know, the uh, fan section there. I love that. They're loving it. I want to say student section, but I'm not sure they're in school. <laughs> That's right. I'm not sure they're old enough. Elwer inside, kicks it out to Stabler, then gets it right back. 2.15 to play in this fourth quarter. Elwer <laughs> navigates his way through <laughs> arms and bodies and legs, keeps possession. Now in the corner, Feathers picked up his dribble, and with that, Coach Elwood will take another timeout with 2.03 to go. His team on top by 20, 49-29. We'll be right back. Just over two minutes to play here at Delphus St. John's Arns and Gymnasium. Evan Skilleter and Jerry Snodgrass with you. St. John's took a timeout. They have two left. Coldwater with three remaining as we are right at the two-minute mark. Here's Grant Olm. Olm has it taken away. I think both teams are just trying to, I don't say get this game over. That's not, that's not right to say that, but at the same time, Coldwater wants to move on and say, let's, 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 I, let's get the next game and let's get in the tournament. You know, it just didn't work out tonight. Same with Delta St. John's. They want to get through this and you know, not get hurt. I mean, because it's so physical. And I don't mean that in a bad way whatsoever. I just mean that from, you have games like that. Sure. Told somebody the other day, I remember a game coaching on a Friday night, worst game, blew a 
blew a 24 point lead going into the fourth Ooh. quarter. And I said I was never coaching. It was one of the 24 times I quit. <laughs> and played a really good team the next night. And, you know, I quit. You know, but I, I came back, of course. And somehow played the best game of the year. So nice. I, it, it's, you have to understand that sometimes. It's the way it is. So that last foul was called against Gavin Holdgreave, who did a nice job helping up the player that he had fouled. And then he turns around and gets a rebound the other end. That's Gavin Holdgreave, the senior. Three-pointer, no good. Rebound tracked down by Drew Boggs. Drew Boggs, a six-foot sophomore, getting some ball handling time in here too. He's played in 13, or he's played in 18 games this year, so you know, he had some good leads, and he's got some quality time. Always good to see some of the younger guys get some action. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's so rewarding for those guys. And that ball was knocked away by Pot Cotter, but he was on the line, so it'll stay with St. John's. In my chapter three, I think, of the uh, almost totally worthless information here, uh, it's really not. But how about the spirit? How about the support? Yes. Uh, it's, uh, it's all across the map, and I know that. But here tonight, I mean, it's just these people are here at the start of the JV game tonight. So cool. Parking lot was packed when yep. I got here. Not many empty seats all across the gym. That two-pointer no good and sticks on the rim. And it'll be a jump ball arrow pointing cold water's direction. Peyton Stabler, you know, he's smiling at that. Well, you don't see that happen too often anymore, but. But I love this, the support they're giving for the people coming into the game like this. They, they're right part of everything. Good shot. Three-pointer goes. Blockburger hit that three. 49-32, St. John's will bring it up across the timeline. And we will hit zeros at Arnzen Gymnasium. Your final score, 49-32. Don't go anywhere. Our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner coming up after this on WOSN. Tonight's Stolly Insurance Hustle Award is presented by Stolly Insurance. Check out the WOSN YouTube page for highlights of tonight's winner. And with 17 points and presumably at least 10 rebounds, Cameron Elwer, what a fantastic performance from the freshman. And you know, you know, so many times you, know, you might think, well, we're going to select this based upon the number of points scored and all that. I mean, that is one statistic. But if he would have had five tonight, I, I would have lobbied for him. He just is the catalyst for that team. He makes things happen. Uh, he puts so much pressure on a defense. And one thing I like about players like him, he makes others around him so good. So you're right, 17 points, at least 10 rebounds, the number of assists, and you know, just so many things that, you know, you talk about analytics, but you, you can't measure them all. Absolutely, congratulations to Cameron Elwer and his team for winning tonight, 49 to 32. And with the win, St. John's moves to 15 and five, six and two in the MAC. On the other side, Coldwater dropping to nine and 12, five and three in the MAC. Jerry Snodgrass, a great game here for St. John's as we head into tournament time. Your final thoughts? Uh, you know what, you're right. It's a great game, it's a home win. You know, it, it's for coaches, there's so much mental in these last couple of games going into tournament play because you never know what can happen. Coldwater has a very good chance at tournament time though. They play LCC, winner gets the winner of Bluffton and Allen East, so they've got some chances. They'll rebound, they'll do well, and uh, at the same time, Delva St. John's really getting some momentum, some big wins down the stretch here going into tournament play. Thank you, Jerry, and thank you to the St. John's Athletic Department for their hospitality tonight. Also want to thank our sponsors on the scoreboard, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, and of course, your Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. For our crew of Mia Waddle and Kelsey Beimer, and my partner, Jerry Snodgrass, I've been Evan Skilleter signing off. Have a great night. God bless.